order the files, and position the handprints. Ah! I mean, the order of the files, I guess. I mean, dude would have. He wasn't laying on the ground. You can't, like, put handprints somewhere else. Order the files. I believe the order of the files is a bit off. I mean, I put them back in the wrong order just now. Hey, actually, I think the labels of the files are wrong, sir. You fucking idiot. Oh. Yeah, you see here how the files were shot be begin with the number zero. What are those doing all the way down there after one, two, and three? That's really weird. Weird. Actually, the way they were organized now is the correct order. They're exactly as I see them in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all out of order. Those white binders are special, so they are arranged a little differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the crime occurred. Uh-huh, so that's it. I believe the killer made the same innocent, incorrect assumption as you just did, Detective. Let's rearrange the files in numerical order and see what we find out. Do you think it'd be okay to pop a body back up and see how it was done before it was moved? You finished processing the crime scene, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. Do you please, Detective Gumshoe? Play with this body. As I assumed. Oh, hey, there's a name over here. As I suspected, the bullet hole is uh, where now where it should logically be. The killer went through my files first before shooting Mr. Faith. And then, the and then put the uh, files back in numerical order, I guess. Exactly, and then proceeded to shoot the victim. But why would someone kill a man and then look through your files one more time? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown into disarray twice. Once before and once after the crime, but why? Now the crime scene is at, uh, uh, as it was at the time of the murder, and have another look. There's a file missing. This! Aw, oh, goddammit. Gumshoe? What's that? Why does it say gumshoe on their blood? I'd say it's some incredible incriminating evidence. Huh. Yes, indicative of criminal activity indeed. No, wait, there's got to be some mistake. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, but, sir, but help me. Say something, sir. I don't care. It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is that all, sir? What about me and my situation? Is that really the killer we was really after? Hmm. Investigation complete. Looks like Jim was able to leave us the name of his killer in the end. And it's the most important message managed to reach us. I tell you, it wasn't me! You can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. If you're going to accuse Detective Gumtrue of being the culprit... I sincerely hope you have some proof to back it up. Jim's words. They're more than enough, wouldn't you say? No. If that's how you want to play it, then at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it. I don't like this one, bad. There's something strange about this man's attitude. There must be some sort of flaw in his logic of waiting for me to dig it out. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you going to do? What I always do in court, I'm going to cross-examine him. I'm going to yell at him for a while. One way or another, I'll expose the flaw in his logic with this technique. Oh, how do you do that? Can you explain it to me, sir? No. Uh, maybe it's some other time. Might as well. I actually don't know what he does. Like, uh, how it's going to be, like, structured. I assume it's, like, going to be... Like the original Ace Attorney, and like you doubt shit. 
All right, first I listen to the witness's testimony. If I find a flaw in the testimony, something that contradicts the evidence, I press him, I open the organizer, and press it. Ah, okay. To present something, I simply touch the present button, but that's all case. It's not like there's going to be a flaw in their testimony every time, right? No, there will be. Correct, in those times I need to press the witness by touching the press button. Sometimes by pressing, I can draw out new information and new or modified testimony. I think I get it, sir. I'll be sure to try this technique out during investigations, too. Very well. I'll even show you how it's done. Now watch carefully. Mr. Portsman's logic. Argument. Detective Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you'd committed theft instead. That's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters his body was hiding. It will be by his final words that you will be brought to justice. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message points to his killer. I can hear Jim's voice, and he's calling for his killer's arrest. Hmm. Are you sure you're not mishearing his words, Mr. Portsmith? Portsman? There's no way Detective Gumshoe's the culprit here. I'll find the flaw in this man's art logic. And expose it with credible evidence. And fucking press everything. Hold it. You know there's something I've been meaning to ask. Why would he steal his gun? Gumtree could have just shot him. What is it? Why do you call the victim Jim? When clearly his name is Buddy Faith. Isn't it obvious Jim is the perfect name for my companion? Jack and Jim. Oh my... Dude, fuck off. Don't those two names go together like peanut butter and jam? But Jim is even close to the real guy's name. Well, Jack and Buddy sounds off. Just off. Uh, uh just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was the third of a bunch of guys I decided to nickname Jim. He talks about the victim like he was his pet. Further, you messed up the files to look like you had committed theft instead. Can I just like, yeah. Fuck. Uh, I don't think I can present on this one. Because like, I would present it in this in the way of like, why would he steal the gun when he has his own gun? Like it would be pointless to steal his gun. Whatever, press on this one. Do you really think it was necessary to dishevel my shelves twice to do that? That's true. Okay, then maybe his real intent was that. Hey, are you accusing me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth? It's a possibility. Maybe your salary's been cut so much that your life is getting a little too rough to handle. Oh, have you know that I eat three square meals every day, pal. Okay, so all three of them happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor thing, what an evil prosecutor you were paired up with. And what a motive, no? That's when he moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. Hold it. And why would Detective do such a thing? Because the body was getting in the way. He had to mess up the bookshelf somehow, right? Anyway, why not just mess the ones above him? But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters the body was hiding. Hold it. Why do you think that the killer didn't notice the bloody letter? Letters. body was covering it quite well, wouldn't you say? That's how he missed it. How, do you, how didn't he notice he was writing letters? But judging by what I've seen, it doesn't take much for your detective to miss something. What do you think you, who do you think you are? You know nothing about me, pal. There's a lot a person can understand from another, from uh, what just, from first impressions alone. I can't say I disagree, I can't say I disagree with him on that point. Why don't you say something, sir? You know, you know you too, Mr. Edgeworth. Despite his lack of attention to detail, I don't believe the detective will be the culprit. Nobody could have overlooked the bloody letters, and I can prove it with evidence. Okay, and as for a better setup. For the game finishing Spike, it will be by his final words that you will be brought to justice. Are you saying that those letters were intended for you? Yep, Jim was an outstanding detective. I would expect no less from my former partner. Looks like Mr. Portsmith. Portsman still doesn't understand. 
is yet to figure out the true meaning behind the bloody letters. What are you sputtering out there? Can't you just admit my logic's per perfectly sound? Actually, there's a gigantic flaw in his logic. A gap so wide that even the good detective can spot. Not a clue, Mr. Portsman, and by presenting some evidence. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm gonna assume it's just this gun, right? I must object to your line of logic. And which part do you have objection to? It's, yes, what? Well, fuck me! Say, Goldman Edward, you're no good when you're all flustered. Detectives, right? For a change. How did it come to this? Calm down, Miles. Listen carefully. Oh, yeah, okay. With a theft, he wouldn't know about the safe, right? Yeah. This one? It would behoove you to take a good look at this. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I was... It was either the safe or the, the gun. I would, I would have... It can argue be both. Why would he take his gun? Detective is a detective. Why would he use the other guy's gun? Really dumb. You just leave fing fingerprints on it, right? I see it, but I fail to see how it has anything to do with me. Is that so? Wait, what? Are you kidding me? I can't allow him to set the pl place like this. I must remain calm. Oh, I swear to God. This is the worst. This is the worst. Uh, body letters. Oh, yeah. If one of the fucking files was stolen, so he would have obviously noticed it. <laughs> oh, why? I wasn't thinking. I was thinking, like, eight levels deep when I should have just been like, oh, No, a file is gone, dude. Perhaps you're not aware, Mr. Portsman, but there is a serious flaw in that logic. <laughs> Bringing a bit of the courtroom into this, I see. No problem, I'm game. I can't help but find it odd. Excuse me? Odd that a fellow prosecutor would be brought down by the power of his own office. What are you talking about? Oh, you're joking, I get it. <laughs> if you have the time to laugh, then you have the time to take another closer look at this. Do you still not see it? If not, may I direct your attention to the missing file? What? That's impossible! What's impossible, Mr. Portsman? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing. The file on the shelf are all about a, a certain case. When the killer went to take that file after murdering your partner, I highly doubt they could have missed the bloody finger letters written on the spines. It's possible that they could have taken the file before committing the murder. Then why would he, like, there's already letters missing in Gumshoe, though. I think it's pretty obvious that the file was stolen after it was written on. The missing letters in the detective's name where the file should be is proof. Yeah, I mean, the S is gone, and there's only half an H. If Detective Gumshoe really was the culprit of this case, I highly doubt that even he could overlook his own name written in blood on the files. Especially as a detective who can't stand the sight of blood. Which means, what exactly? What does that, that make this dying message? It makes it a work of criminal intent of tampering with the crime scene. Huh. That's so low, I can't believe a criminal tried to pin this whole thing on me, sir. I'm gonna get him, sir. You see, I'm gonna have them under arrest in no time. Yeah, I'm sure you will, buddy. Well, Mr. Portsman. <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely splendid. Logic deserving of Olympic gold. I appreciate the praise, but it doesn't change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Meh, you win some and you lose some. That's how life goes. Ho oh, hum. But everyone's so cheery, even though I feel more dead than alive. Ah, but you know, it really is a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however... What is it this time? Are you still after me, pal? Humor me for a second. Who has the key to this office? That would be me. Mr. Edgeworth just proved I'm innocent, pal. What? That's absolutely right, I acknowledge your innocence. Then why do I sense that you still have something to say? I put my jacket on. What the hell? Well, I was thinking. Did you know where this one other person with the key to his office? There's one other person with the key. One other person. Hey, you there. Yes, sir, what is it, sir? 
Would you kindly fetch an escort that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? That girl is a member of this building's security. Think of her as a material witness. Security? Did say you say security? No, stop it, pal, don't! What's wrong with him all of a sudden? I believe she needs no introduction. I've called upon Miss Maggie Bird. Oh, fuck, no! Oh, God, please, no! A member of security. What the hell? Detective Gumshoe, sir? Maggie! Mrs. Bird is the security guard on watch tonight. I see, and your point is? My point is that she could very well have used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the office doors in this building. Whoa, what? If you're not the guilty party, Detective Gumshoe, then the only other person with the access to this room is Miss Bird. How dare you! I never seek into someone's room! I'd rather refuse to believe that Maggie's the culprit, pal. Uh, it was me. That's right, I did. You fucking... You piece of shit. Stop it. Can we take that as a confession, detective? Well, it wasn't really me, but it definitely wasn't Maggie, pal. So yeah, it was me. If it was, you'd have no problems with that, right? Please refrain from flying off the handle, detective. There's no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, detective. He understands what I'm saying here. That girl is the only one who could have committed the crime. And for one simple reason. Oh, not again. Reason for suspicion. There's no real good reason. It's pretty obvious that Miss Bird snuck into your room using the master key. I mean, a Detective Gumchu isn't the one who opened the door. Then that leaves only Miss Bird as our prime suspect. On top of which, she knows our, our good detective, doesn't she? Making it all the more probable that she is the one faking the dying message. So you're saying she used the master key? Master key. Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then, this is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflexes and good in reaction time, especially for an athlete like me. I wonder if there's anyone else other than Miss Bird who could have used the master key. Seems that the only way to get Mr. Portsman to give her more details is to press him. Oh cool, now it's depressing. Okay. Reason for suspicion. Give me a press on that. Are you sure Miss Bird is the only member of the security who could have used the master key? There's only one person on staff at this time of night, and tonight, she's it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? That's, uh, true, but... But I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir. Wasn't able to. What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes, moving on. Uh, I'd hate to get sidetracked on by something unrelated. What do you mean, unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal. But you can't really trust her not to tell lies. Plus, I hate wasting time. Should I hear Miss Bird out? Ask for more details. Not so fast. I, too, am interested in hearing what Miss Bird has to say. Didn't I just say it'd be a waste of time? We don't need to hear her lies. I'll be the judge of that. Miss Bird, if you please. I discovered that the master key was missing at around 1 a.m., sir. What do you mean by missing? As in, it wasn't anywhere in the security booth, sir. The killer must have stolen it. Mr. Portsman, I believe this to be an important piece of testimony, don't you? I can't believe that someone like you would be taken in by such words. I'm not lying, sir. Objection. Hey, you're not allowed to say objection. If that's the case, then I'd like to know why you have the master key now. I don't quite know. It just reappeared all of a sudden, sir. <laughs> a likely story. And where's your proof of that key was stolen to begin with? I bet you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I never lose things. I can practically generate guarantee that. With me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone stole it. Yeah, pal, trust me. You don't want to test just how bad her luck is. 
Unfortunately, I can't deem this piece of testimony as conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. Alright. But, but... You still haven't established Maggie's motive for breaking into Mr. Edgeworth's office. Her motive? Didn't we already establish that it was theft? I mean, the culprit clearly went through the bookshelves and at least tried the safe. It is as Mr. Portsman says, Detective. I can't ignore the fact that all the evidence points towards a motive of theft. But I'm done taking blows. It's time to counterattack with a few facts of my own. Yeah. Open the door. I concur that the culprit's motive appears to have been thievery. However, glad to hear that the great Miles Edgeworth is in agreement with little old me. However, with regard to the investigation of the bookshelves and safe, hey, good thinking, asking for my opinion on the matter. Would it be too much for you to allow me to complete a full sentence? You fucking cock. I thought we had established Detective Gumshoe's innocence pretty thoroughly. It was just a theory, oh, one of hypotheses among the many possibilities. I mean, I had my doubts about Miss Bird from the very beginning. If that's the case, then why didn't you mention her first? Now, now, don't make that fa that face. See? There goes the truth, running the other way. Let's pick up the pace and see who can catch up to it. I don't think you're catching my drift. Ah, oh, but we are in agreement that the detective isn't the killer, right? If so, then I hope you'll understand what I say. Then she, since she is the only one who could have opened your office door. Hold it. Press it. Press everything, boy. Don't you think it's a bit early to be jumping to conclusions? Are you saying there's another way to open the door with the other, other than the master key? Oh, I get it. Perhaps you had a spare made for someone else. I'll have you know I have never made a spare, so what are you insinuating? Nothing. Guess I should have known better than to suggest that someone like you would. Hold it. By dying message, you mean the bloody letters that spell out gumshoe. I figured that whoever wrote his name must have wanted to frame him. And just the act of choosing his name is proof enough that the two kn knew each other well. Mr. Edward, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and present some evidence. I would love to. But first, we should listen a bit more and digest what he's saying. I'm pressing for more information. Okay, I guess the other one. The fucking one that I didn't. <laughs> the one I didn't. Is there anyone in this district who hasn't at least heard of Detective Gumshoe? Good point. He's practically a celebrity among us of prosecutors. Not a good one. Really? I never knew I was so talked about. Sir? We're holding our collective breath, you know. For when you screw up so badly that you're literally chased off to the, off the force. Wait, what? Is that true, Mr. Edward? Of course not. That's hogwash. Ew, don't scare me like that. I almost had a heart attack there. That's all he- what? Uh, fuck. What didn't I fucking press? Hold it. I sure murder Miss Bird is the only member who could do it. Yeah, uh -huh, did that. So maybe I don't want to testify against it? Okay. He was missing about 1 a.m. What do you mean by missing? It wasn't anywhere in the security booth. No proof of that it was stolen. Need motive, I was already established theft. Do I actually have anything? Oh wait, fuck! I do have fucking proof of that. God damn it. I 
can't ignore the fact that all the evidence points towards a motive of theft. It was proven that it was fucking stolen. Fuck. It would behoove you to take a good look at this. I see it, but I fail to see how it has anything to do with me. What? God damn it. You're not at the top of your game, are you, Mr. Genius Prosecutor? I can't allow him to set the pace here. Fuck. Like, I tried this before. With gum shoes. Does it work here? Oh, thank God. Do you wish to continue in insisting that Miss Bird was set on stealing something? Why not? It's the truth after all. It was also by your logic that we came to the whole thievery conclusion anyway. It may be, but you must also be aware of the fact that the safe is a secret safe. The existence of which is only a privy to prosecutors. Ugh. I found it a little hard to believe that a hidden safe was a part of her cunning plan. But, but she could have found it by accident while she was turning everything else upside down. I highly doubt that. I'd say the culprit knew exactly what they were looking for. After all, only the bookshelf and the safe were targeted. <laughs> yeah, even I didn't know about the safe, pal. That means there's no way Maggie could have known about it either. And are you proposing that the killer is a prosecutor? Interesting conclusion. That's definitely something more and more pro looking more and more probable. Uh. What's wrong, Prosecutor? Do you have a different suspect in mind now? I, I... Curses! Why, what made you... What's with the angry face all of a sudden? It's... It's all my fault. What do you mean? It's Jim. He knew. About the existence of the secret safes. What did you just say? We were partners, like inseparably... Inseparable conjoined twins. That's why I told him. I filled him in on the secret safes. That means. Yeah, I know. I had only just told him, too. Obviously, it was wrong of me to tell him. I still can't quite believe it. But the thief who broke into your room was probably Jim. I was claiming that the victim was the thief. And you were simply trying to stop him, weren't you? Miss Maggie Bird? Excuse me? I mean, you are a security guard here, right? That's your job. The killing is going a bit too far, even in your risky in your risky profession. What though? You're still accusing Maggie of the murder? Yes and no. I mean, she had stumbled upon Jim, who'd probably drawn his gun. I get it. It was self-defense, wasn't it? No, I couldn't. I could never do something like that. Not even as a security guard, sir. Was well, even if he was the thief, he wouldn't have a key to the office, which is precisely why he had to steal it. Wouldn't you say? I thought he didn't steal it. It was Jim who stole the master key. Ah! Pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with us unless... Unless you retrieved it from Jim after you killed him. Mr. Portsman, are you honestly accusing your own partner of being a thief? I don't want to admit it, but it's the only way for everything else to make sense. Has he no honor? Now then, I think you're done investigating. Uh, the investigation waits for no man, bye. Would you people be so kind to see yourselves out? You can't get guys out, this is Mr. Edgeworth's office. Ah, but I'm the one who's been assigned to this case. You're all suspects to varying degree and therefore inel ineligible to run this show. I'm not. Listen, pal, how many times do I have to say this? Maggie can't be the culprit. Detective Gumshoe, calm yourselves. But sir, we have no choice but to accommodate his request for now. Uh -huh, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. At least one of you understands. Now then, if you could remove yourselves from my crime scene, I'd be most grateful. Hmm. Mark my words, Mr. Portsman. We will meet again. That's a formal request from a legend, the legendary prosecutor himself. Now, I suppose so. Now, don't disappoint me, you hear? To be continued. Who are these people? Who's the girl on the left? Oh, both girls on the left. Who's the girl in the middle? Right. Slight, slight right. I want all three of them. <laughs> Fuck Gumshoe on the far right, though. 